Welcome to Drury Arena and the uh, the Family Center here at uh, on the campus of Drury. We are getting set for the 18U girls game between the Chaps Chariots from Lansing, Michigan. Head coach uh, Nate Russer and the Indianapolis Wildcats uh, from Indianapolis, obviously. Coach uh, Jill R Rudell or Ruddle. Uh, Looks like a pretty evenly matched game uh, so far, just on paper. Yeah, for sure. Let's see how it plays out. Two versus three matchup in a pool B. First game of the week for both these teams. Hey, the Chaps win the toss. Looks like Indy comes out in a man-to-man -man defense. Let's see how a Chap plays against it. Ooh, looks like a could have been a travel there. Good play inside. But good rebound. Kicks out. Oh, good three. And the three falls, number 11. Ellie Rooser. Ella Rooser. I yeah. believe that must be the coach's daughter. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she'll get the ball. That was a nice looking three from the, yeah, from the top of the key. Bodies on the floor already. Ooh. Chaps are pushing. Play. Looks like Chaps in man-to-man -man defense as well. See how this plays out. It's gonna be an out of bounds call. Ball back to the Chaps. By the way, my name is Scott Bagg. And I'm Nick Fairley. Will be your uh, analyst for today. Bodies are hitting the floor early. It's a good sign. Well, somebody's aggressive anyway. Yeah, yeah. They're not calling the foul. Last last game we had two teams that were extremely aggressive in the first quarter. Uh, pushed the ball, a lot of turnovers. That's probably four offensive rebounds already, and uh, Nymphs gets the, the two to fall finally. Yeah, Karen is a 6-1 post. Gets the bucket off the rebound on the inside. Quick 5-0 lead for Chap. Let's see how Indy responds. Oh, good block from 24. Nimhart. Let's see if Chap pushes the pace. Yeah, we don't have a lot of time sometimes before games to go to the coaches or assistant coaches and get the correct uh, yeah. <laughs> pronunciation of these Just names. Best, some yeah. of them are pretty easy. I can I can easily do Smith and Jones yeah. and that, but there's some of these that uh, – that I, I can't pronounce, so uh, we apologize in advance for the mispronunciation of somebody's name, but it's not on purpose. Bridget Crombie goes up for the shot, gets fouled, does not get the bucket. Fouls on 24 uh, for Indy Woodward. Woodard, I can say Holly that. Holly Woodard. That's her first, her first, first foul, foul of the game, game yeah. Bridget gets the first one to go down. You know, last game we had some, I think there's only one missed free throw. You, uh, you love to see that as a coach. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't affect the game. Yeah, you know, it could have. Yeah. Uh, then she misses the second one. Now I wonder this, if this is, this is probably the girls' first game of the day, so I wonder yeah. how late they stayed up last night. You know, I know when I was playing, you know, the road trips, even though you're supposed to go to bed early and have a tournament, it's still hard, you know. Yeah, I know my team didn't get to bed till like 2 a.m. last night. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get in till about 1, 1 15 a.m. Oh, okay. Well, that's. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had to play a men's league game last night back in Chicago, so I just drove oh, wow. up after that. Took some of the players with me. Had to show them how to, how to play before the big week. Had a jump ball, the possession arrow uh, favors the Chaps. 
steal. But, you know, I don't know if that was correct, but did, didn't the Chaps get the tip? Yeah, well, I think Indy, Indy had, had uh, the jump ball there. Okay, yeah. okay. Oh, another foul drawn by Kraup Crombie. And uh, she'll go to the line again. She's one for two on the day. Looks like the foul was on 14. No, no. 23. No, 23. Foul was on number 23, Myra Garcia. Timeout for Indy Wildcats. Coach looking to talk it over after a 7-0 start. So 30-second timeout while we're on the 30-second timeout. Uh, I don't know if you've been to Culver's Restaurant, but of Culver's course. has been uh, part of the community here. Uh, they love it. They say, we've never been prouder to be part of this community than we are right now. As an owner and operator of a local business, we are so proud to be a sponsor for NCHC Tournament. On behalf of our team, we appreciate you all visiting. Look forward to serving you. In fact, they're going to give you a dollar off the value basket. You know, we can only ask in this game that we have a lot of value baskets. Yeah, yeah. But they're going to give you one dollar off if you go to their link on the National Christian Homes, uh, nchclive.com. You'll see the sponsors, but you'll get one dollar off any value basket by visiting Culver's. So as we come out of the 30-second timeout, at the line is number four, Bridget Crombie, to shoot one-on-one. Or one shot. Yeah, she made the first to make it a 7-0 lead. She misses the second. That's what she did last time at the line. But ripped away by Chap, a three. Good. Oh, that's, that's how you do it. Miss the free throw. Yeah. Get the steal. I'm sure that's what they talked it, about in the timeout. Three. That's what they called in the timeout. It that's Rooster with her second her three second of the game. Three, 10-0, not what you want as a start for the Wildcats. See if they can get their first bucket inside. Oh, high arcing shot off glass for 24, Woodard. It was a two-pointer. Yeah, not sure if you called bank, but it counts nonetheless. Well, glad it's not ping pong, because I think 11-0 yeah. is, is the scope yeah. of ping pong, right? Yeah, there's 20 easily getting inside. It's her second yeah. bucket of Nims. the game. Well, they're going to call a foul. Appear to be a tie-up from this angle, but. Now substitute at the end of the game is number 24, uh, Lena Nyhart, or Nehart. I think it's probably Nyhart for the Chaps. Let's see if Indy can get something going towards the rim. They've had most of their things inside. It's going to get caught for an illegal screen there. Number 24, that is her second. Already, wow. Let's see if uh, the coach leaves her outer, out there. It looks like uh, she is being left out there. Has their only bucket of the game thus far. Number 20 with the ball. That's uh, Karen Nimps. She's 6'1". Yeah, Chap's got some height. They do. There's one girl they list at 5'9", but I swear she's 6'3". Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least sitting down, she looks 6'3". Yeah, that's... <laughs> a three for Garcia. Oh, rims out. I always love watching basketball games now because of the shoes. You know, when we played, everybody had to have the same uniform. Yeah, you yeah. Know, same. Now the popularity of... Uh, of sneakers and basketball shoes is everybody's got to be individual now. Yeah. So you got 10 players on the court and I think nine different styles of yeah, shoes. Yeah. So. <laughs> Air ball there for Chap. Uh, it'll be Indy Wildcats ball. That was number two, Abby Motley attempting the three. Stolen away by Chap. Layup no good. Another offensive rebound and she's fouled. That's got to be 10 offensive rebounds for Chap already. And we're still three minutes left in the fourth quarter. First quarter. So On the line is uh, going to be uh, Lena Nyhart. Who was that foul on? I didn't, I didn't catch see. it. Thank you. Foul was on 21 for Indy. That's uh, Reese. Addison Reese. 
That's her first. Team's fourth. She goes one for two at the line. Indy Wildcats have been mostly on the perimeter so far this game, looking to get to the rim. See, basketball's easy when you get to the rim. Uh, that's number 20, uh, Ruddle, getting right to the cup. It's her six points. So she has uh, three buckets on the night so far. Another offensive board. Chap's bigger, but it doesn't look like Indy's doing a great job boxing out. They need to get their bodies in front of Chap, and then I gave that foul or the point to the wrong twenty. That was a twenty on Indy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, that was just her first bucket of the game. Correct. Another steal for Chap. Rooster all the way to the rim misses. See if Indy can get stuff going. Drives inside. Nice Runner little floater, look good, just didn't fall. There's definitely been more offensive rebounds than defensive rebounds so far this game. There was two offensive rebounds for Indy that possession. I believe the foul was either on 23 or 24. I, th I believe that was on 23. It's her first yeah, foul. That's her game. first. Both teams have been playing a uh, man defense. Out of bounds, the ball will belong to the Wildcats. It is a 15 to four lead for Chap. They've been playing very aggressive man defense, have a lot of steals that uh, result in very easy buckets for them. I mean, there's a long way to go, but the size is definitely uh, yeah. uh, giving the Wildcats some problems. The size of the Chaps are giving some the Wildcats some problems. Oh, a deep three is good. Well, that's a real deep three. That's, that's Book Walter. Another drive going to the bucket, and that's going to be uh, Number four, shooting her fifth and sixth free throws of the game. That's uh, Crombie. And Crombie's uh, making a living tonight yeah. at the free throw line. She's two for four. Let's see if she can get both of these to go. Misses the first. Let's see how she adjusts on the second. Don't see a lot of left-handed basketball players anymore, do we? Yeah. She missed them both. The team that uh, my team played against this morning had four lefties out of their six oh, players. Oh, seriously. So oh. yeah, well, as soon rare. as I say you don't yeah. see them anymore, you saw four in one game. Yeah, they were good shooters, too. Nice. Got around number five there and got to the hole pretty quick. Nice move there by number 20. That's Ruddle, her second basket of the game. And just like that, the lead's cut to six. And a quick response for Chap with three seconds left. That was Rooster, no shot there. Rooster with her eighth point. Now that'll end the first quarter, 17-9. After a 10-0 start, it's been pretty uh, evenly matched since then. We'll be right back after this timeout. When my body needs relief, I real time it. I'd like to introduce you to my knockout pain formula, real time pain relief. Its soothing lotion is rich in nature's ingredients and helps me manage discomfort day or night. Mmm, and it smells great too. From muscle strains to soreness to simple back aches and arthritis, real time it and knock out your pain. It works for me and it will work for you. Real time pain relief, it's a knockout.
Or be Chaff's ball to start the second quarter. Chaff's leading 17 to nine. But the Wildcats have uh, made a little run. Yeah, after that 10-0 start for Chap, uh, Indy has been leading 9-7. Foul from behind. And that'll send Bookwalter to the line for two. I think the foul was on, actually I'm not sure. Was that on 11? Is it on 11 or four? There was a foul was on number four. That's her second. Bromby with eight points, but two fouls, and that'll send her uh, to the to the bench. Actually, she's she's only got uh, two points. Rooster has eight points. Don't you do that? Somehow you get a. Chap working the ball around. It looks like the Indy Wildcats have shift to a 2 3 zone, so let's see how Chap responds. Good active hands by Indy, but it leads to a wide open three in rhythm. And that's number 11, Ellie Rooser, with already her third three of the game for 11 points. I believe she is three for three from distance. There's number 14, three of her own, just short. Well, as they say, nothing but net. They yeah. hit the bottom of the net on that one. <laughs> but not didn't go through the hole, though. Looks like Andy's still in their zone. Let's see if uh, Chap can shoot out of him. You, you know the coach went to that zone to try to combat the height of the uh, Chap. And I'm actually surprised he didn't do that earlier. Yeah, yeah. But I, th I think he might have if they hadn't have made a little run there at the yeah. end. It's, hard, it's harder to rebound out of a zone, but you got to... They weren't rebounding well out of man, so you've got to change it up. Was that number 14, number 14 for another three? Her second three of the game. That's Bookwalter. I think we know who our three-point shooters are. Bookwalter and Rooser. I believe Bookwalter's two for four. Rooser, three for three. It's going to be off Indy. And it's going to be chap ball underneath. When I played post or forward, you know, you get the ball that close. What's your coach tell you not to do? Put the ball on the floor. She's she should have just, yeah. she just went up with it. Yeah, sometimes you don't trust those posts to do much work with the dribble. Looks like chaps come up with some full court pressure here. Let's see how Indy responds. A steal. Dive all over the floor. You love Great to see hustle. that hustle. Absolutely. And I love the officials just let two two players go, go get it. You don't have to make a foul call and reward both players for hustle. But Indy has done a good job of uh, battling through the adversity of a tough 10-0 start and getting themselves right back in this game. Chap's been mostly on the perimeter since they switched to this 2-3. You like to see them get the ball into the high post and maybe do some high-low action. Another offensive rebound for Indy. They're trying to hit double digits in the offensive rebounding. Leads to a three. Finally, a defensive rebound. The pace of this game has certainly picked up recently as uh, the chap is pressuring and uh, Indy is uh, pressuring full court as well. And there's another three. She has three of her own. Is that 14 again? Yeah. 
That is Bookwalter with her third three, three for five on the day. We got Rooster, three for three for Chap. And uh, India is in the midst of a 17 to 10 run to get themselves right back in this game. It's, uh, uh, it, it started lopsided, but it's evened up. Yeah, which here. is what you want as a fan and a broadcaster. You want a close game. The, 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 the zone, going to a zone defense, uh, definitely uh, slowed down uh, the chaps a little bit, uh, took out some of the, uh, the opportunity to get the boards on the inside. And uh, Wildcats have made a nice little run here to kind of even things up a little. Yeah, basketball is a game of adjustments, so we'll see we'll see how Chap responds to Indy going to this 2-3 zone, see if they can uh, try to get more inside action. Looks like they have two players starting at the high post. Looks like a double dribble. That's another turnover. It seems... Chap has had a lot more turnovers since they've switched to this 2-3 zone, which uh, you may not think of directly. Uh, as You think of man as creating more turnovers, but this zone is creating turnovers for Indy. It's a reach on number 11, Rooster. That's just her first, though. We got four team fouls for Chap and five team fouls for Indy. Another bank shot for number 24. That's her second bank of the game. Still not sure if she's calling bank, but if she keeps doing it, <laughs> maybe she's going for the bank from the free throw line. That was 24? That was 24. And her second one? Yeah, second bank. Number 20, Nymphs from the short corner. Her two buckets have been right at the rim. That was a little long. I think the, that the line or something on the court jumped out and yeah. <laughs> caused her to trip right there. You know, Those, those are always embarrassing when you uh, re-watch them on video. You know, and you're in the team room and everybody sees it, gives you a hard time. At 23, Claire Johnson. And just like that, Indy has battled back and taken the lead over Chap. Still a 22 to 10 run. And probably since four minutes left in the first quarter. Chap gets one inside. I like to see them go into the hoop out of this zone because uh, when you, those outside wingers on the 2-3 have to close out on you, it's a good time to try to break past them. Another three. Uh, she is feeling it now. You know, she's, she says, I got the zone. I am yeah. in the zone. Give me the ball. I want to shoot that three. Yeah, I feel like Chap has the advantage inside, but they've seemed to abandon it, but they get a three of their own. That's number two. Abby Motley, Motley. hits her first points of the game with a three. And it's tie ball game. Back to where we started with two minutes left in the first half. Another three. No good, offensive rebound. A step back three is blocked. That's a good block there from Rooster. You know, I think everybody, both teams are settling in a little. Yeah, uh, better flow than we had earlier. You know, probably a little jet lag from travel yeah. over the weekend. Maybe stayed up, watched the dunk contest yeah, last yeah. night. Watched that uh, the 15 year old Lily. Uh, dunked the basketball from oh, Michigan. I did not see that. Wow. 15-year-old girl from... Uh, oh, another three. That's her fourth three for Bookwalter. Julia Bookwalter is four of eight from three. Started 0 for three. Hit four of her last five. One of the, the sponsors for National Christian Homeschool is Oak Hills Christian College. Oak Hills Christian College offers a biblically-centered education, promoting a Christ-centered worldview to prepare men and women to serve God where he places them. We are located in beautiful Lake Marquette near Bemidji, Minnesota. Apply now to join the Wolfpack as a student athlete in basketball, volleyball, soccer, 
or cross country at www.oakhills.edu. Real faith, real learning, real life. Oak Hills Christian College in Bemidji, Minnesota. Bemidji is a beautiful place if you like cold winters, uh, a lot of snow, but awesome summers, a ton of lakes up there. So. I've never been there. I'm, I, I'm from Fort Worth, Texas, but I'm a diehard Minnesota Vikings fan, so I may just have to go visit Bemidji. Yeah, it is beautiful up there. Northern Wisconsin, northern Minnesota, beautiful, beautiful place. But I'm sorry about your Vikings fandom. <laughs> a lot you know, of heartbreak li Living over the in years. the Dallas-Fort Worth area and <laughs> yeah. being a Vikings fan is brutal. <laughs> of course, living in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and being a Cowboys fan is brutal, too, <laughs> these days. Yeah. Past 25 years haven't been good to them. Well, we go from football to March Madness at the National Christian Homeschool Basketball Champions, the 31st year of this tournament. Nice bucket inside for Nymphs. That's, oh, not Nymphs. That's number 20 on the other team. Uh, 20 on uh, Indy is Ruddle. That's her, that's her seventh point of the game. Seventh point. Boy, number 11. That's her 4 3. You know, Rooser and Bookwalter are going shot for shot. Both, both of them have made four threes just this half. And A good hustle, good hustle on the inside. We're going to the jump ball. It'll be Indy's ball. I wonder if they'll hold for the last shot here. I, I assume they would hold for the last shot with 24 seconds left, but they went inside, had a turnover. But they got a bail out there on the jump ball. Good hustle. See if they hold for one here. Goes inside. It's going to be Indy's ball still. It was a 15-0 lead to start the game. May end the half. Uh, with a two-point lead, and they were behind. They definitely take that. Oh, nice look on the inside, and she gets the foul. And one. That's 24. Uh, Woodard looking for her seventh point at the line. Five seconds left. Chap's going to have to push, push this up the court, court rather very quickly. Long three. You'd expect that to go in from Rooster, who's made four already. Well, that second quarter were definitely a turnaround for the Wildcats. Uh, we'll see if the adjustments could be made at halftime. Uh, we'll be back uh, after a few minutes here, and we'll see in just a second. When my body needs relief, I real time it. I'd like to introduce you to my knockout pain formula, real time pain relief. It's soothing lotion, it's rich in nature's ingredients and helps me manage discomfort day or night. Mmm, and it smells great too. From muscle strains to soreness to simple back aches and arthritis, real time it and knock out your pain. It works for me and it will work for you. Real time pain relief, it's a knockout.
Welcome back to Drury University. What a beautiful facility it is. I love the fact that they have DU down at the, I guess that would be the north end. It stands for Defensive University. We, we, we've seen some defensive struggles today, so I'm going to make that DU stand for Defensive University as opposed to Drury University today. <laughs> um, if you're in Springfield this week, uh, which I think a lot of you are, visit the Wonders of Wildlife. Take your family on an unforgettable outing and explore the beauty of the Ozarks. New, Oz New Ozarks outing tickets allow you to experience two great Johnny Morris conservation attractions. Choose from Wonders of Wildlife National Museum and Aquarium or the Dogwood Canyon Natural Park. I should say Nature Park or Top of the Rock Ozarks Heritage Preserve. From penguins and sharks to cascading waterfalls and canyon cliffs, there's something for everyone. We can't wait to see you in the Ozarks. Learn more at wondersofwildlife.org. As we return to the second half, it'll be the Chaps ball. Chaps are down 28 to 32, starting this, the third quarter. But we have some had some hot three-point shooting in the first half. Yeah, four threes for both Rooster and uh, Woodard. And there's another three. Was that Woodard? I actually did not see. I think it was number 14 again, to be honest with you. Well, it was a three for Chap, and they don't have a number 14. There's a long jumper for Indy, and that is, uh, that is, this is the wrong. And the three-point barrage uh, continues for Chap. Two threes to start out the half. Inside, drawing the foul, going to the line. We have two shots here. That is Woodard going to the line. And she made the first. Let's see if she can make the second. And she does. That is her 10th point of the afternoon. Another offensive rebound for Chap, put back up and in by Nymphs. That's her sixth point. I believe all of them off offensive rebounds. But Indy has done a much better job of securing offensive, uh, defensive rebounds, which is the reason they got into the big hole to start the game. Let's see what Chap can do here. Tie ball game. Nimart for three. It is a three point barrage. That is Chap's third three of the half already. Came into the half. Oh, wow. Got a foul there from uh, Rooster. That's just her second. You don't want her in foul trouble if you're a uh, Chap fan, but if you're a fan of Indy, you definitely want her in foul trouble as she already has four threes and 16 points. And she'll head to the bench. Book Walter just long on the layup. I like that she got to the hoop though. Even though she's four for four, you, you want the defense to have to respect you inside so you can get more open looks on the outside. It's gonna be off number two on the Chaps. Be the Wildcats ball. Chaps sticking with their man defense here in the second half. Indy went and stuck with their 2-3, which got them right back into this game. It's 
Johnson. Foul on Nymphs, I believe that's just her first. That is her first. That's gonna be long. Chap looking to push off this long rebound. Chap doing a good job of working the ball around. Gets a pull-up jumper out of it. And another, uh, this is going to be a foul on number 24. 20, 24. She comes crashing in. That's Woodard. I believe that's her third foul. Uh, Chap just killing them on the offensive uh, glass, and that's going to create a foul. That's just her second, I believe. I have her third also, yeah, I actually. I had her third, but the scoreboard has her at two. You know, we could only dream of being the official yeah, book, yeah. can't we? Yeah. But oh, a hard foul to the face. Again, the inside in, in, in the inside is strong again for the Chaps. Uh, starting this third quarter again. Puts number, f uh, puts uh, uh, Crombie at the line again for uh, two shots. It's definitely hard to win a game when you're being uh, out-rebounded uh, on the offensive glass where they're getting second and third opportunities almost every time down the floor. We want to thank... Uh, 323 Sports, uh, the athletic team provider specializing in the distribution of sports apparel and equipment to schools and colleges nationwide. 323 Sports is the exclusive uniform sponsor of the National Christian Homeschool Basketball Championship. 323 Sports carries a wide variety of brands and can help you with anything requiring custom printing or embroidery. Check out their website, 323sports.com, or contact them directly with an email at sales at 323sports.com for more information. 323 Sports does all the uniforms for Team USA here at the uh, basketball championships. They also do a lot of these programs' uniforms uh, themselves. So we want to thank 323 Sports if you're thinking of Buy new uniforms for your program or your team, 323sports.com. Let's see how Crombie can uh, do at the line. She's, this is her seventh and eighth free throw of the game. See if she can knock them down. She's two for, two for six right now. Not an ideal start. Looked like she was six for six after that shot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, looked pure. That was that was, that was a, a nice uh, wrist action there for a left-hander. Not for a left-hander, from a left-hander. She gets both of those. I just noticed she has the same uh, basketball shoes that I wear currently. Nice LeBron shoes. And as you were saying in the first half, everyone's got different shoes. It's got to be the shoes. But I, I, I can't lie, those are my favorite shoes out there. There was a, a, a young man that came in uh, yesterday, had a pair of Retro Jordan's on. We looked them up, and the starting price was fifteen hundred dollars. Oh wow! <laughs> I'm like, uh, uh, Rooster tries another three, another rebound for Chap. So I guess I guess you can spend money on uh, those those type of shoes. Yeah. I, I I don't gonna, not going to spend that much. Yeah, if, if Indy uh, ends up losing this game, they're going to have to look back at the tape and see how many second chance points they gave up. No, no, no question about it. Let's see if they can turn that around these final 12 minutes of the game. And, and it looks on, on their side, it's one and done. On Chap's side, it's two, three attempts almost every time down the floor. And just as I say that, oh, almost another rebound, but that's uh, taken up by Indy. Have you been keeping the offensive rebounds? I have not. If I, I knew it was going to be so so drastic, I definitely would have at the beginning of the game. But I definitely would guess they have at least 15 offensive rebounds and probably close to 15 uh, second chance points. That three is off. Book Walter. Uh, not as hot in the second half from the three as she was in the first couple of quarters. There's but another three. That's Crombie's first three of the afternoon. 
You know, the way she's been shooting quite a bit at the free throw line, we would have thought that was not yeah. just her first yeah. three. But she has a nice left-handed shot. One of the prettiest I've seen today. Oh, a crossover. A oh, after a move like that, you expect the shot to fall. <laughs> oh, good block. That brings the house down when yeah. it does, though, doesn't <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> nice pass up the court. Way to look. Pass from from Rooser. To Rooser. To Rooser. Hey, I bet they're related. Yeah. Maybe. They're playing on the same homeschool team. I assume they're related. Chap already has 20 points this quarter to Indy's four, so that's 16 point lead and uh, Indy's coach yells out that they're switching to man. Two, three, got him back in the game, but uh, Chaps finally figured it out. And it's, as I said earlier, it's a game of adjustments and counter adjustments, moves and counter moves. See, see how uh, Chaps gonna adjust to the man defense of Indy. Got a foul on number five. That is her first. Lotzenheiser, Abby Lotzenheiser. Yeah, I was going to try to say her name, but I was going to I was going to let you take that. <laughs> like I said, I've already apologized. A uh, quick update from the other uh, side of Pool B, one versus four matchup. It's the Eagles uh, 33 uh, from Fort Bend, uh, Texas, and the NOAA Jaguars have 23. It looks like it's coming to the end of the first half or third quarter. It's counting down there. Going to be a foul on uh, Bookwalter there. Yeah, this is going to be an exciting pool to watch as we head into the the game tonight and tomorrow as we conclude the pool play portion. We've got a 12 point lead for Chap. See if they can build on it here. And, oh, oh, a nice, nice hook little shot. jump hook. It's old school. <laughs> Nim's got that one down. It looks like she's been doing that all her life. Yeah, that was pretty. Shots aren't falling right now for the Wildcats. That means generally on, when the rebound comes out, it's going to be a Chaps rebound. They get the ball up the court. Tried to go inside to the post there. And I was wondering why they weren't doing that more, working a little inside-outside game. But maybe the coach heard me thinking that. Yeah. The second quarter, they really went away from going inside, and that's when Indy got back into the game this third quarter. They've gone back inside, and Indy just has no answer. Tough miss there, but good, good shot attempt. Those one, are shots you can live with. One minute to go in the third quarter. Another long shot. Rebound comes out to the Chaps. Surprised there was no offensive rebound there, but Indy's definitely happy with that. They need to, they need to put together a run here very soon, or else this game's going to go away from them. But those turnovers aren't going to help. Looks like Chap's going to hold for one. Chap is winning this quarter 22 to four so far, trying to build on that. And they're gonna get two more chances at the line. That's Nimhart going to the line for two. Short on the first. That foul was on uh, Book Walter for Indy. That is her third. Five team fouls for both sides. Nyhart drains the second. 
A little pressure trying to get them to have to touch the ball in the backcourt. Swing across. Good look at a three. Going to be short. That ball was tipped right there at the end for a block by Nymphs. That quarter was dominated by Chap, uh, 23 to 4. Wow. Yeah, rebounding definitely is the key. Oh, we'll be back after these messages. Well, welcome back to Jewelry. Well, win or lose this game, sometimes we're a little sore. If your kids are a little sore, your players, or maybe you are experiencing some pain, please see real-time pain relief to get your free gift. It's an exclusive. Do you have pain? Receive a free one-ounce go pack of George Foreman's knockout formula with any purchase from realtimepainrelief.com. Just use the following coupon code, NCHBC. 23 and receive a one ounce go pack of George Foreman's knockout formula at realtimepainrelief.com. Beginning of the final and fourth, uh, the fourth and final quarter for this game. Wildcats down 36 to 51. Going to need to make a, uh, this is, I think, an important basket right here. A important possession for them. They were down 10-0, so we know they can battle back because they took the lead going into halftime. But they're going to need to do uh, a lot of three-point shot making or getting the ball inside and getting quick buckets. Chap's going to maybe, maybe be some and ones there. too. Uh, getting the post up, but that turnovers aren't going to help. They're going to call it jump ball, and it's going to be the Chap's ball. See how uh, slow and methodical Chap takes it with a uh, 15-point lead. Clock is definitely their friend at this point. And with no shot clock, uh, they are in no rush at all. They just want good looks at the basket and no turnovers, leading to easy buckets for Indy. Just working the ball around. It looks like their coach told them at the break that they just want good shots and another offensive rebound. Put back for Crombie. That is her 11th point of the game. Probably has a double-double with a lot of offensive rebounds. Well, 20 points, 20 points coming off of offensive rebounds. Yeah, no doubt. That's a, the that's a difference in this game. See if Indy, Indy has some fight left in them. They need to score quickly and get uh, quick stops as well. Reaching foul, and that's going to be a one and one situation, so exactly what the Indy Wildcats needed. And not what the chap wants to do. Yeah, that is the seventh team foul now in the one and one bonus. It's going to be Ruddle shooting free throws. Hits the first. That is her eighth point of the of the night. Just short rims out. Need a quick stop here if you're Indy. Indy can seems to be content to let them run their sets. Chap being very patient with it. Looks like she was held there, no call. Let's see if Indy can take advantage. Uh, let's 
it's going to belong to Chaff. With a 16-point deficit, you'd expect uh, Indy to ramp up the pressure here pretty shortly. Rooster and Rooster come back into the game. I think that's the first time we've uh, said that, Rooster and Rooster. Sounds like a law firm to yeah, me, yeah. doesn't it? I'd go there for my law needs. Nice screen and roll. Easy bucket at the rim, but another offensive rebound for Crombie. And uh, that's got to be her 10th offensive rebound. She has a ton of putbacks. That's been a difference in this game. Good floater there for number 20, Ruddle. And that's her 10th point. Still a 16 point lead. Chap gonna be content to trade bucket for bucket. So and I don't think they wanna be forcing it now. Just get a good shot, work for a good open shot. No need to force the ball in. You got the game in control right now. Indy needs to work quickly and on defense, turn them over quickly. Another block for Chap. And that's Crombie all the way coast to coast. She's doing it all. Offensive rebounds, steals, layups, putbacks. She's been a very uh, crucial player to the Chap today. Yep, they couldn't do it without number four. Nice move to the basket. Uh, good hesitation. Ruddle, get, Ruddle getting to the rim. Yeah, she's had six points in the last uh, minute and a half or so. So good fight from her. See if she can rally the rest of the team. And what remains a 16 point deficit. I, I, think, I don't think Coach is probably happy with that shot. There's yeah. no need to, to force, force up a three pointer there. Yeah. Rooster had uh, four threes in the first half, uh, no threes this half. Same with Bookwalter for Indy. Four threes in the first half, no threes this half. Abby Motley gets into the game now. She has two points on the night. Out goes Crombie with a deserved break. Yeah, she's done well. Got a long week ahead of her, though. Yeah, they get with two games today. They, yeah. you know, if you have got a good sized lead, rest yeah. your starters and. You know. All right, another nice move. That's 23, Garcia. She's got eight points. What a nice move, move and a kiss off the glass. Yeah. Nice steal, just what you need if you're Indy. Got a foul there, and one! Big time. She can cut it to 11 with a free throw here. I don't know how that ball got up there, but it did and it went through. That's her third bank from Almost the free throw line. She's making a living on the glass. That's well. She's making bank. Yeah. Isn't that what yeah. they call that? <laughs> oh, she's three for four from the line now. 12 point lead. Indy needs a quick stop. Let's see if they ramp up the pressure. The chap. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say the chap coach really needs to tell his girls that they. Don't need to force anything. They have the lead. The clock is their friend. Well, that's what I was fixing to say. No need to force it. Great minds think alike. That's just going to be the sixth team foul for Indy. I believe that was Tolbert's first, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Let's see if Indy can cut it to single digits with a three or just a 10 point lead with a two. And then they're right back in this game. Make Chap a little nervous. Another block three. Three point just a little bit long. Indy giving Chap their own medicine with offensive rebounds. Second chance opportunity does not work as planned though. I wonder if any fatigue because a couple of these shots are falling short, so I wonder if that's setting in. Yeah, the pace really picked up in that third quarter, which uh, definitely seemed to favor Chap. And now they pull the ball out a little bit. A 
legal screen on 24 Nimhart. That is her third, I believe. As we go to a 30 second timeout here at uh, Drury University. We want to want to thank you. Uh, the univers several universities are a partner with the National Christian Homeschool. One of those being Evangel University, where another main court is. If you're looking for an affordable, flexible Christian education, find what you need at Evangel University. Dual enrollment opportunities allow you to earn credit in high school, and you can choose your course format fully online or in person at our beautiful campus in Springfield, Missouri. Here's the deal. It's only $65 a credit hour. I'm not sure when the last time I knew of uh, a university that had $65 a credit hour. So it's a great opportunity to get a jump start in your college education. Learn more at evangel.edu. Most colleges these days seem to be charging $65 per credit minute. Yeah, so $65 absolutely. Dollars per credit hour. In fact, stepping on campus is yeah. just $65, <laughs> yeah. you know. Well, let's see how Indy uh, comes out of this timeout. Gets Goes right, rim. right to the bucket with a nice move. I think she scored eight points in the last, uh, she's definitely had eight points this quarter. And that is Ruddle looking to will the Wildcats back into this game. Yeah. High pressure. Yeah. Jump ball is going to favor the Wildcats. No signal yet. Jump ball it is, and it's going to be Wildcat, Wildcat ball. Call the jump ball, but it looked like WWE yeah. there for a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not Friday Night Smackdown. Yeah. That's coming. Two minutes left, 10 point lead. It's not over, that's for sure. Indy needs to put together some stops, get some quick buckets. I know they're trying to get Book Walter free because she's, she's their three point shooter. You don't need to settle for a force three here. Oh, good diving block. And they called the foul on the follow through, didn't let her come down to the floor. That's a good call. Uh, which is a good land. call. It was a clean block up top, but underneath didn't give her the chance to land. Nice hustle there for number four, though. That's uh, Crombie, who seemed to have done it all for Chap. Diving on the floor for the ball and then leaping up into the air to get the block. Just unfortunate she hit uh, Bookwalter's feet, who will shoot three right now. Bookwalter was hot in the first half with four three-pointers, has not hit one in the second half. Well, let's see if she can hit some when it matters most. most. Sometimes it takes a free throw or two to feel the rim and get back in the groove there. So She's got three, three free throw, throws to feel the rim. Uh, one for two. It's a nine point lead with just under two minutes remaining. Nims comes back in, puts some height back into the Chaps lineup. You'd like to make that last free throw because then you can set up your full court press as well. So that's a big crucial well, miss. Plus you really needed those two points. Yeah. Let's see what Chap does. Does not need a bucket, but Indy gets the steal. Poked away, but it's still Indy ball. Chap does not need to score. Does not need to force anything. But uh, those turnovers are really going to hurt him. Chap's going to take a timeout here. No give up in either team. Both teams still fighting with 125 left in the fourth quarter. PGC Basketball, if you're looking for a top-rated basketball camp for your player, send them here. PGC Basketball teaches players the game-changing skills and super valuable leadership skills that coaches at the high school, NCAA, NBA, and WBA, WNBA levels mostly look at when deciding who they want playing on their team. Players who attend PGC learn how to think the game so they can separate themselves from every other player on the court, which leads to things like getting more playing time, becoming the player coaches trust most, 
getting more attention from college coaches, winning more championships, and much, much more. Just go to pgcbasketball.com. Sent my son to PGC basketball uh, years ago. Um, and it, I'll tell you what, it was a lot of classroom. It was a lot of learning. And they do, they teach you the mind of the game, the philosophy of the game. It's not just about dribbling, even though it's point guard, but it's, it's that skill level, that leadership, those game-changing skills from a mental aspect. So I have personal experience with that with my son. Let's see what Indy does out of this timeout. Needs some quick buckets down nine with just over a minute remaining. Looked like she got away with a double dribble there. It's going to be a chap ball. Let's see how aggressive the Wildcats are here. They're going to get into a full court press, which they need to. And they need a steal or a quick foul if they want to extend the game. Looks like they're just going to try to get the steal and not, not foul. Chaps content to just let the clock keep winding. It's only a nine point game though, so that's only three possessions. Still plenty of time. There's a foul there on uh, number 21. 23. I believe, believe that's uh, on Garcia, yeah. Fouls on Garcia, Garcia. 23. Her that's second good. of the game. It's according to the score, that's her fourth. Oh, wow. Okay, well, that's her fourth. <laughs> well, I'm trying to help her out and stay in the game. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we crossed off a few fouls. Yeah. <laughs> Let the girls play. She misses the first, uh, though, so that's going to give the Wildcats a chance here. Just a three-possession game. They need a quick three. That's that not going to That is not help. what you need. I'd say looking back, the d main difference in this game has been offensive rebounding. And that's just given Chap so many more uh, possessions with which to score. And that third quarter was crucial, where they outscored uh, the Wildcats by 18. You know, it was only a three possession game with over a minute to go, and they were, they're were they not really trying to aggressively, uh, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd use the clock to my advantage and start following, make them earn free throws. You know, and then, then if they get a rebound like that, come up to court, you need a quick three. Yeah, at this point you need a three. But can't take this long to shoot it. It's going to be a timeout for the Wildcats. Uh, looks like a full timeout. Full timeout. It's going to be. We'll be right back. With 15.7 seconds left. We return from the full timeout at Drew University. 15.7 seconds to go. The game in hand by the Chaps. Wildcats uh, need a quick three. And then uh, get the ball back. That turnover is not going to help there. That probably will do it. No need to foul here. Not enough uh, time left for those possessions. Just play good defense and uh, oh, they get to the next to game. But they go to foul anyway. They don't care about our time. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the players are more important. We got a one-on-one -on -one situation. Maybe Indy wants to get one last three up. But at this point, I don't think it's mathematically possible. No, there's not enough time left for the, the need three, four possessions now, so.
But you're right. The key to this game was rebounding, offensive rebounds specifically by the Chaps. Uh, it's over 20 points that were scored. Uh, 26 or 28s. I need to look at that stat uh, just off of rebounds, off offensive rebounds, which was the difference in the game. Yep. And Ellie Rooser ended the game with 18 points for Chap, uh, leading them in scoring. But they were a pretty balanced attack with Crombie, Nims, Rooser, and Nimhart. Size was the key in this game. Have a great time here in Springfield, Missouri. Go, uh, th go visit some of our sponsors, Culver's or the Wildlife Center, the Wonders of Wildlife. But thank you for listening. We'll see you in the next game.